All right, folks, so we're going to do the transaldolase mechanism to finish up the PPP. Uh, remember that transaldolase does a three carbon transfer from the ketose to the aldose. And so the three carbons that we're going to be transferring, of course, are going to come from the ketose and they're going to be accepted by the aldose. But in this case, um, we don't use TPP, we use a shift base that's formed from a lysine. And so we're going to have to form a C double bond N. And typically we think about this being a positive N. And for the same reasons we've talked about it for NADP, for the TPP, and now for the shift base, nitrogen really likes to get its pair back if it's a short one, okay? So what we're gonna have to have happen is form that shift base. Uh, Transaldolase only does the following reaction of F6P plus, oops, sorry, not F6P, S7P. plus gap, and that's gonna form E4P and our F6P. There's our F6P coming in. Um, so we're doing a three carbon transfer from the SU7P, our ketose, onto our aldose to form a six carbon ketose and a four carbon aldose, E4P. So I'm gonna draw my SU7P. It's a ketose, left, right, right, right. We saw that from the transketolase mechanism. Okay. So we're going to be grabbing those top three carbons off and moving them over. Okay. In this case, we're going to be having to form a shift base. So we're going to need a lysine to come in and do this. And we talked about this mechanism when we did aldolase mechanism. I'm not going to go through it again. But keep in mind that this is still something you need to know, and I might ask for it on an exam. Okay. So we're gonna form our shift base here. We're gonna be losing a water in this part. We'll be regaining that water when we come back uh, to the final product, but keep that in mind. Okay, so right, left, right, right, right. So in short here, what's happening is the double bond O is replaced by double bond N H plus. Um, and so we're gonna be using that again to hopefully get this to happen. This double bond is gonna be pulled up by the nitrogen, but it has to be pushed. We don't wait for things to pull, we will always push them. Okay? In this case, what's gonna happen is the base is gonna be pulling here at the beta position. Recall that trans, the aldolases do beta carbon, carbon bond cleavage or, or formation. Only deal with forming or breaking beta carbon, carbon bonds. So we're gonna be forming a double bond here. This is now gonna become our new aldose the bond is gonna swing up and push that up. So we have one, two, three arrow pushes here. So on the bottom, we're gonna have our new aldose. It's right, right. E4P. On the top, we're gonna to end up with the enamine of the shift base. Okay, and just like we saw with TPP, if we push single resonance form, we develop charge out here on the end. Okay, so now what we're gonna use this to do is, in regular aldolase, we just attack a hydrogen and be done. In transaldolase, since it's a transferase, we're gonna be attacking our gap. Maybe I'll do this in blue. It's gonna be a pain, but I'll do it so we can keep it straight. Okay, so we're gonna be taking that pair from the resonance form, attacking over here, uh, and in this case, the old carbonyl becomes a OH, and that goes to the right-hand side. So it's pro R. Okay. So on our final product, what we're going to have, of course, we're going to have our shift base still in place. 
that's attached to the enzyme. We didn't lose chirality here. It's the same position as it was over here, right? It used to be left over here. It's still left on this side. Um, but the rest of the molecule, the old carbonyl goes right. Okay. And then we lose our shift base. So we're going to end up with a hybrid molecule. This is F6P, and that goes back into the HMP. So that's kind of the big picture here with the pentose phosphate pathway. We have transaldolase, which does three carbon transfers because of the positioning of that nitrogen close to the ring or close to the substrate. If it's close, you need to push it off to beta. With TPP, the nitrogen has pulled one carbon into the ring. And so that means we can cut one carbon closer to the carbonyl. We do an alpha cleavage with transketolase versus a beta cleavage with transaldolase. So look at these two mechanisms, understand the differences and similarities between them. I really like this kind of question where I have you compare and contrast it. So I'll be prepared to be asked about this. Also, I would recommend you practice these mechanisms on different kinds of substrates. Make up a random one to pick a random ketose and a random aldose uh, and mix them together and see if you can predict correct products. Knowing that you have true carbon transfers for transketolase, the old carbonyl going left, three carbon transfers for transaldolase, the old carbonyl going right. Okay. Good luck. We'll see you in the mitochondria.